Okay, today in this class I am going to discuss uh, topic uh, viscosity. And now, firstly, before uh, going to start viscosity, uh, one of the word must say about the fluid that fluid motion is basically much more complicated than that of solid. And practically the motion of a fluid is broadly divided into two classes. The first one is the steady, stationary or streamlined flow and the second type of flow is the turbulent. Now what is a streamlined flow? A fluid is flowing from one point to another point through any capillary in such a way that if you pick up any point in the pathway of its direction of flow you find the magnitude and direction of the velocity of fluid at that particular point remain same for all the time. In this figure, if you look at this figure, here we choose three point A, B and C. When a fluid starts its flow at any particular time, the velocity of the fluid at point A through this line is V1 and at that time at point V is V2 and at point C that is V3. Now if the time progresses but the velocity of this three point that is at A the velocity of the fluid remains V1 the velocity at point B remains as V2 and the velocity at point C remains as V3 then we can say that the motion is a streamline. Now the path followed by the steady flow or the particular fluid is flowing in a steady manner, a steady flow, the path followed by the partic particle is known as streamline. Now in this figure, all the straight line, the fluid is flowing through this capillary tube and all the straight line represent a particular streamline motion. So there are numerous number of streamline flowing through this capillary tube. Now <coughs> there are characteristics of this streamline that tangent at any point over this streamline represent the direction of the velocity of the particle. No two streamline can cross each other. If for some time if you assume that there exist two streamline that intersect with each other, then at intersecting point you find that for a particular particle which is situated at that intersecting point may have 
to direction of its velocity at any instant of time which is not possible so <coughs> we can compare the streamline with lines of force in magnetic or electric field streamline must have for the properties that when streamline are crowded together the velocity of the flow increases and when they are further apart then the velocity diminish so the similar kind of behavior we can found in case of lines of force of magnetic and electric field that when the lines of force are crowded together the field strength will increase so we can compare velocity of particle with field strength and of course the streamline with lines of force now this streamline flow sometimes called the laminar flow so the laminar flow is basically refers as a predictable distribution of flow of velocities in a layer okay and which is parallel to the wall in this figure the flow is parallel to the wall so we can say that this flow must be a laminar flow if you assume there is a good approximation between the flow through our blood vessels now we can say that the flow is idealized but it is nevertheless a fairly good approximation of the flow through a medium or a small size blood vessels so through when blood is flowing through the medium or small size blood vessels of human circular system then the flow will be laminar so there exist some property or the theoretical uh, uh, assumption about the perfect flow of liquid though it is uh, not possible for uh, all time so the velocity in a perfectly straight path there will be no branching of the vessel non pulsating flow it should have a period parabolic in cross section and with the peak of the velocity at the center of the lumen when these three properties are assumed then we must say that the flow will be a laminar flow and when the flow profile become flattened okay and with a nearly uniform distribution of velocity across the lumen then the laminar flow will be termed sometime as plug flow and this term sometime applied for a specific type of laminar flow now if we going from laminar flow to uh, if there exists some obstacle say for example these are the laminar flow or the streamline flow <coughs> of liquid and there exists a small type of obstacle here then what happens it the fluid stuck here and goes along this line the fluid stuck here and goes along this line some fluid which are coming through this point they are also their velocity becomes different and the direction of the velocity will change so there must be a circular type of motion exist in this point when obstacle found and the velocity of the particle at any given point varies in both magnitude and direction 
thin, this type of flow is known as turbulent. And there exists some critical velocity of this flow. When a velocity is below the critical velocity, then the motion will be streamlined and above critical velocity, the motion will be turbulent. Now, what is turbulent flow? At the same time, <coughs> We can assume turbulent flow with our circulatory system of human body. The cavitic transfer of fluid, it will be random and it will be fluctuating with respect to time. At any time, the velocity which exceeds the critical velocity, that is critical threshold, then the laminar flow will be disturbed. If there exist different type of bifurcation or branches of human circulatory system, then the flow become turbulent. And ideal assumption of this turbulent flow or the streamline flow will be controlled by a dimensionless parameter and that parameter is called Renault number. I can come Renault number later. So the in case of steady flow, the flow were rather very limited. They occur in small velocities which is much much below that of critical velocity and it flows through a narrow tube. More often the flow is not steady. So this type of flow must be turbulent. So as the flow is turbulent, the velocity at any point varies with time as well as with magnitude in some irregular manner. So these are not regular velocity and as a turbulent nature we found there must be some vortices or eddies here. So these flows represent laminar flow and locus of this point must be parabolic through a capillary tube. Here in the second picture I found that the velocity this velocity will be along straight line and parallel to the wall but the when we go from center towards the wall we can found that there exist different type of direction of velocities and as a result there will be some circular motion the small arrows represent the circulatory nature of this AD or the vortices and the same thing <coughs> happens in this figure assume that these are the blood vessels so through these blood vessels the bloods are flowing so this flow must be plug flows. Okay, which I said this is plug flows. After this plug flows, there exists some laminar. And when the radius of the tube becomes very large, then there will be this streamlined nature of the flow will be disturbed. And the velocity becomes turbulent. As a result, some vortices are found. Through this color picture, we can found that this are the 
blue uh, green liquid and through the center some red liquids are flowing so from this point to this point the velocity is almost laminar or streamline but after reaching above the critical velocity the liquid velocity will be disturbed and it become turbulent so you can uh, take a thought experiment or make an experiment through which you can uh, study the turbulent or the steady nature of this liquid flow you take a small pipe here and through which there will be a big bigger one and there will be a smaller one through the bigger one you can take some uh, uncolored liquid and through smaller one you can take color liquid like this red one and if you pass both of the liquid through this tube you can find that from certain point to certain point there will be a laminar nature of the liquid flow but beyond that the flow will be turbulent so turbulent flow is characterized by formation of these vortices this may be easily seen when some solid object if you take a solid object which are moving through a fluid okay if you found some obstacle then the it becomes turbulent or rather I can say if you increase the velocity up to a certain critical velocity the flow of the solid will be turbulent okay now in the next part as I mentioned earlier that the turbulent can be predicted on the basis of a calculated value of a dimensionless parameter and the parameter is known as Reynolds number in this point I come to the part what is Reynolds number <coughs> so Reynolds number is basically I mentioned here as R so R equals to a rho means density of the liquid D means diameter of the vessel through which the liquids are flowing and V is the flow velocity of the liquid through the tube and this eta this is the characteristics of the liquid which is known as coefficient of viscosity so Reynolds number and these four quantities are related through this relation <coughs> now if the values of this R is less than 2000 I can predict that the velocity will be or the flow will be laminar and the velocity at any point remain constant throughout the time but whereas if R becomes greater and greater usually greater than 2500 you can predict that there will be turbulent flow okay so uh, these are some picture of human blood vessels and if you see that there will be some eddies and vortices to this blood vessels These are the picture of some laminar flow and must be some turbulent flow. 
in case of laminar flow you see that the velocity remains constant and the locus of the path will be a parabolic but in this case turbulent flow there will be some local vertices or eddies are formed i can take a video clipping here to see that these are the so i can take this. the liquids are flowing and flowing through this you can find that after some times this velocity will be there will be vortices eddies and the velocity become turbulent but if you go center from this point up to this point uh, if i assume so much so these are the of course some streamline motion in a, this picture you can find this picture of some smoke and if you see that depending on the velocity the turbulent flow sometimes become laminar one in when the smoke is rising it becomes laminar but as soon as it mixed with years velocity becomes greater will scatter and the velocity becomes much greater than the critical one it becomes turbulent now if you see that so the velocity uh, till now i'm talking about the properties or nature of the flow of liquid <coughs> now i can tell something about a uh, property of liquid and the property is known as viscosity as you can see that the reynolds number or the nature of this uh, turbulent or the streamline flow depends on coefficient of viscosity rather as Reynolds number depends on eta so viscosity is a property okay. now what is the property the property of liquid by virtue of which two successive layer in a liquid that opposes each other okay so in this picture you assume that these are some liquid layer these are the surface of liquid and these are the bottom of liquid now say for example a river is flowing so the bottom which is basically solid surface it remains as a fixed one it tries to keep itself at rest but the layer just above this ground the ground level it tries to gain some velocity due to this layer just above the first one because this layer must have greater velocity than that of this and as i am going from bottom to the top of this river i can find that there will be a velocity increment or the velocity is increasing if i am going from zero to positive z direction so i can say that these layers are in relative motion and as this layer are in relative motion each layer which are flowing with relative to each other 
they are trying to keep it trying to oppose the velocity of the others so this property is known as viscosity you can think of a engine oil which is basically used in bike or the carts to make it more efficient of the engine so it reduces the viscosity so viscosity is basically the internal friction between liquid layers so what is the reason of this viscosity the main reason of this viscosity is basically attractive force between the particle of the same liquid so this attractive nature is called adhesion so due to this adhesion these layers are opposes the relative motion of the second layer so if you go from this point to above this the motion of this layer will be obstructed by this layer as on this layer will obstructed by this the motion of this is obstructed by this and this so the viscosity which is a property of this liquid due to this this layer sir in relative motion tries to oppose each other so viscosity is not a force it is basically a property of a fluid due to viscosity the rain drop which are falling as you on your head does not have infinite velocity and it if you wet in the rain uh due to direct strike of the rain you keep it does not uh, uh, what i'm saying that it does not uh, strike much greater velocity than it may have when it passes from a uh, big distance from some cloud to the ground so assume that these are the raindrops <coughs> i'm taking this raindrop in this figure and there exists some air among this these raindrops are falling now as the raindrop is falling due to the force of mg that is the mass and the acceleration due to gravity that is the weight of this raindrop and as it falls from sky to the ground level the velocity will increase the velocity increases at the same time as it's falling through the air there will be some viscous drag that will retard the velocity so there exist two types of flow two types of force which are acting on this 
particular raindrop. One is its wet and the opposing force is viscous drag or retard force. So the resultant must be mg minus this viscous force. So due to this two types of force, it assumes a constant velocity through which these raindrops are coming to the ground. And this velocity is called terminal velocity. And this terminal velocity can be assumed if you take an infinite depth point or infinite depth C, you throw a small stone and after going to a certain distance, you are trying to measure the velocity. It becomes terminal, a constant, due to these two types of force. Now I can say that How can you calculate the characteristics of this fluid? Depending on the nature of the liquid, it can be classified into two classes. A type of fluid which are flowing through laminar flow. In this point it has got some velocity and this dv divided by dz is called a velocity gradient. Now, for some particular type of liquid, this shearing stress, that is force per unit area, when it's flowing through a laminar flow, that is proportional to the velocity gradient. Or I can say that the force is proportional to area or the force is proportional to velocity gradient. Those classes of liquid are called the Newtonian liquid. And this hypothesis is basically called the Newton's hypothesis. Now this F is equal to eta A dv by dz. Now this eta is called the coefficient of viscosity. How can it be measured? If you assume that the velocity gradient is one unit and area is one square unit, then the force is equal to eta. So you can measure the coefficient of viscosity through this process. Now, if you check the dimension of this eta, the dimension of this eta is basically dimension of force divided by dimension of area and dimension of velocity gradient. Now the dimension of force is mass length into time to the power minus 2 and obviously the dimension of area is L square dimension of velocity gradient is L t to the power minus 1 divided by L so ultimately the dimension of eta becomes m L to the power minus 1 into t to the power minus 1 in CGS unit this is called poise and in SI unit, this is kilogram meter inverse second inverse or pascal per second. 
now for newtonian fluid we can say that the relative displacement of two layer separated by a distance dz the relative velocity is dv and this separation is equal to dv into dt as the layer is separated dz distance in time dt so the relative angular displacement of that particular layer is basically dv into dt by dz so what is the rate of change of this shear must be equal to velocity gradient so i can say that this shearing stress f by a is equal to eta into d theta by dt so for a newtonian fluid i can say that shearing stress is proportional to the rate of change of shear this is the characteristics of newtonian fluid but all fluids are not newtonian there must be some fluid which does not follow the newton's law now i can say what is the characteristics of any ideal fluid ideal fluid a those fluid which cannot support the slightest shear when it keeps at equilibrium so if you put some fluid in equilibrium and if it is ideal one if you give a slightest amount of shear then the equilibrium situation is break and the fluid starts flowing now for non newtonian fluid it can withstand small shearing stress without starts flowing so non newtonian fluid are those fluid which can withstand some small amount of shearing stress but if you take ideal fluid which is newtonian one it does not support any slightest amount of shear so after a certain stress value it starts flowing the value of the stress for non newtonian liquid start flowing that value of the stress is called the yield value so beyond yield value non newtonian fluid starts flow now as i mentioned earlier that there must be a velocity range which is called cap critical velocity if the velocity of the liquid becomes greater than the critical velocity it's become turbulent or below that critical velocity it's become streamlined there exist experimental relationship between critical velocity and of course some characteristics of the fluid if you calculate this relation dimensionally you can find these are the dimensions so critical velocity depends on coefficient of viscosity density of liquid and obviously dimension d q 
case a dimension list called quantity I can call it Reynolds number K now if you calculate the dimension of the left side and right hand side the dimension of uh, eta is basically m l inverse t inverse so this to the power x x is unknown to us and density obviously m l to the power minus 3 to the power y y is also unknown to us we need to determine this and obviously length to the power z now comparing this left hand side and the right hand side if you take the dimension of L you can find the relation is obviously minus x minus 3y plus z equal to 1 and if you compare the dimension of m then x plus y equal to 0 and comparing the dimension of t you can get minus x equal to minus 1 so from this point you can say that x equal to 1 and if x equal to 1 from this equation you can say that y must be equal to minus 1 as x equal to 1 and y equal to minus 1 the z will be minus 1 so critical velocity is basically k eta rho into d so we can calculate the relationship between this Reynolds number and obviously density critical velocity dimension of the container and obviously coefficient of viscosity here now as I mentioned earlier I have said all these things that k value lies between 0 to 2000 the flow will be laminar between 2000 to 3000 there is a transition region and the flow becomes unstable it may change from one type to another and above 3000 value the flow become completely turbulent for water at 20 degree centigrade and it is flowing through a narrow tube and its diameter is approximately 1 cm and if its average value is 10 cm per, uh, 10 cm per second taking it equal to 0.01 the value of k will be 1000 now I can uh, derive the flow of liquid through a narrow horizontal tube and the equation is derived by French physicist whose name is Poizuli and he carried an experiment in 1840 shows that when an incompressible fluid flows through a narrow horizontal tube in streamlined motion the volume of fluid flowing per unit time which is varied with fourth power of radius or I can say diameter of the tube and it will be proportional to the pressure difference between two veins of the tube it is inversely proportional to the length of the tube and 
eta which is obviously a constant. So the volume of the fluid flowing per second through a tube will depend on pressure, diameter and obviously length. Before derivation or the theoretical derivation of this Heuser's equation, there will be some assumption. My first assumption is that the fluid is ideal and the fluid is Newtonian. The flow is streamlined and the flow must be parallel to the axis of the tube. The third assumption is that over a particular cross section of the tube, pressure is same at all points. That means there is no radial flow. There will be no radial flow at all through the tube. My fourth assumption is that the layer of the liquid or the fluid just contact with the wall of the tube is at rest. So the liquid which is in contact with the wall does not flow at all. It remains in contact with the wall for all the time till the flow is running. And the last assumption is that the applied force is fully expanded in overcoming the viscous resistance. There will be no other kind of resisting force than viscosity. Now consider a horizontal capital capillary tube of length capital L. Its radius is capital R and it is flowing along positive x direction. The flow is from left to right. Along this direction the liquids are flowing. The velocity of the liquid will be zero which are in contact with this wall according to our assumption. The pressure difference between this point and this point will be P. The area of cross section is as this is length of 2 pi r into del delta x. So area of cross section of this laminar region which is taken away from this capillary tube its area is 2 pi r into delta x. Delta x is the thickness. Okay, so the tangential force at this point must be 2 pi r into delta x into eta dv by dr and tangential force just above this layer. will be 2 pi r into delta x into eta dv by dr. Obviously at this is dr distance away from the first one. So there will be a del by del r of this. 
okay so these are the tangential floors okay so these are our assumptions and according to assumption we take this result now the pressure gradient shall be constant along the tube pressure remain constant throughout the tube so the del p by del x must be constant so as del p by del x is constant then dp equal to alpha into 0 to l into delta x so alpha is basically p2 minus p1 divided by l if you integrate this factor you can find that del p by del x is basically minus p by l there will be no gravity so we are not considering about the gravity now the inner layer of radius r apply the tangential force that is 2 pi r into delta x eta dv by dr in negative x direction and the liquid outside the cylindrical cell so liquid inside the cylindrical cell it <coughs> gives a tangential force this and liquid outside the the shell which is given by this red line it must have tangential force as this so the resultant force must be f2 minus f1 okay so this resultant force must be used to overcome the viscosity okay so as this resultant force and this is viscous force obviously so this force is overcome by the pressure gradient other liquid is flowing through this tube completely I'll give its uh, total amount of energy to overcome this viscous force so we must say that the force due to pressure is this in negative x direction and along positive x direction the pressure must be p plus del p by del r as you take this to layer <coughs> so the difference of this pressure will be equal to zero okay or uh, difference of these two pressure uh, sorry must overcome this velocity viscosity or the viscous force so the viscous force minus pressure gradient the viscous force minus the pressure gradient this will be zero now if you integrate these things you can find that the velocity of this liquid must be pr square by 4 eta l plus a log r plus p so at t equal to r equal to 0 at the center when radius equal to 0 v will be maximum and that is called v0 which is P capital R square by 4 eta L and velocity at R equal to capital R that is V equal to 0. So at any instant of the point when R equal to capital uh, R equal to um, smaller at that point velocity will be p divided by this p divided by 4 eta l r square 
small capital R square minus small r square. Now, what is the amount of volume flowing through the tube per second between the radius r to r plus t r? Now, dv equal to 2 pi r into dr, that is dr of cross section, into v, that is velocity. So, from this part, I can take velocity and put in this point. Now, integrate over 0 to r, you can find that velocity or the volume of the liquid flowing per unit time is pi p r to the power 4 by 80 tyre. This is the famous Poisson's equation. Now, this equation gives the volume of the liquid or the volume of Newtonian liquid flowing per unit time through any capillary tube. Now as this is average velocity, what is the average velocity? Now average velocity is basically 1 by areas that is pi r square into total amount of a velocity integrated over the all area. So it's become half into v0. So average velocity is basically half into axial velocity, that is maximum. Now the Poisson's equation are not perfectly correct. It needs some correction. The first correction is correction of kinetic energy and the second correction is correction for acceleration. Velocity by which the liquids are flowing through capillary tube is basically P by 4 eta L into R square minus small r square. Now, the mass of the liquid flowing per second through the cell is basically rho into dv that is rho into 2 pi r into dr into v. So this will be kinetic energy of the liquid flowing per second out from any particular area is basically sum of dt. So if you mix sum or integrate over 0 to r, this quantity becomes rho p v square by pi a t tau. Now, this energy will ultimately produce some differences in pressure gradient of this liquid. Now if you assume that P prime is the resultant pressure, so this pressure arises as a result of loss of kinetic energy. So this plus kinetic energy is equal to ultimately PV, that is total amount of work done now P prime is P minus this so eta is basically pi P is replaced by effective pressure so P prime so into r to the power 4 by 8 LV so pi p r to the power 4 by 8 lv minus rho v by 8 lv. 
now there exist some correction due to acceleration this cannot calculate it directly one assumption is required that additional energy needs to overcome the viscous force near the inlet and this is equivalent to additional energy spent to overcome little longer tube okay so there must be some additional distance covered by the liquid through the tube and this additional distance must be equal to n into r where r is the radius of the tube so the coefficient of viscosity becomes pi p up to the power 4 8 l plus n r into v minus m rho v divided by 8 plus 8 pi into l plus it r the value of this small is experimentally found that this will be 0.5 and 0.8 in this range and the value of m will lie in the range of 0.5 to 1.5 so through this I am completing viscosity course